Maths Calculus 2018. This is the video on the first topic, the road traffic sensors. You should see that you have got this graph actually in your data sheet, and I've labelled it V for the number of vehicles per hour and T for the time and hours since midnight. Also notice in the question that you are being given a model, that V is equal to 0.2 times all of this, and that it's applicable for 0 less than or equal to 3, less than or equal to 12. In other words, since it's since from midnight from 0 to 12 noon. And the question says, explain why the model cannot be extended to 1 p.m. So first thing we'll do is say, well, what is T at 1 p.m.? That's quite straightforward. 12 is 12 noon, 1 p.m. T is 13. We then need to say, well, what happens if we put T equals 13 into this? We've got to make it clear that we're actually substituting T equals 13 in here. So I would write down the formula, but where I see a T, I'm putting a 13 in brackets. Okay, so I'll just replace T by 13 each time. But in order to work it out, I'm not going to type that into my calculator. Whenever I'm doing a substitution, I always use the count button because you're less likely to make a mistake with the count button. It's a bit quicker. So what I do is I type in the original equation here, but where I see a T, I've got to put an X. So I make sure first that I'm in mode 1, which only works in mode 1. Then I put 0.2, open bracket, 2250, minus 2616, and then instead of T, I'm putting X, plus 915x squared and then minus 57x cubed. Then I need to move a little bit to the right before putting on that close of bracket. Now, as soon as I've typed it in, before I do anything else, I check it. So if I move to the right again, it takes me to start. 0 0.2, good. Minus 2616x, good. Let's move along, cross it. Okay, the next bit, plus 915x squared, good. Then minus 57x cubed, brilliant. Okay, so that's correct. Then I just do calc 13 equals, and it comes to this, s to d, minus 470. Now, so we must show that we've done some working out. This is our calculation. It comes to minus 470. And then we say, well, does that make sense? Can we have minus 470 vehicles per hour? Obviously, you can't have a negative number, but you now need a statement. So my statement would be something like, there cannot be a negative number of vehicles. So we show now that it can't work at one o'clock. OK, let's go on to the next question. Let's move that out of the way. Right, let's go. Question two, still the same formula, V equals same thing in terms of T. It says, find D2V over DT squared. Prove there's a local minimum, and there it is. Explain what this means specifying the time of day. So first, let's find D2V over DT squared. Well, we do that first by finding DV over DT, and then D2V over DT squared. So we've got to differentiate twice. Now. I could expand by 0.2, but I'm not going to bother doing that. But I mustn't just get rid of it. I, I leave it there. So I have 0.2, then I differentiate that part. So I get 0.2. Number on its own disappears. Minus 2616t, so it's minus 2616, but it's just number times t, t disappears. Then multiply by the power and reduce the power by 1. 2 times 915 is 1830. Reduce the power by 1, so it goes to t to 1, which is t. Here, minus 3 times 57, 171, reduce the power by 1, t squared. So here, reducing the, multiplying by power, reduce the power by 1. Multiply by the power, reduce the power by 1. Here, I'm actually multiplying by the power, it's t to the power of 1. And then when I reduce the power by 1, the t disappears, and then numbers of them disappear. So that's dv over dt. D2V over DT squared. I do the same thing again. So 0.2. Number disappears. Here is 18 VOT. Just go to 18 VO. Here, multiply by the 2. So it's from mi minus 342. 2 lots of that. And T to power 1, which is T. 
So that's d2 b over t2 squared. We've done that. Now, prove there is a local minimum at 1.733. Now, to prove there's a local minimum at that point, we've got various things to prove. Firstly, we need to prove there's a stationary point there. Secondly, we've got to prove that when t is 1.7, that b is 33. And thirdly, that it is a minimum. So if I look back at the sketch, I see, here's the point I'm looking at. You see, it is about 1.7. It looks about right. So you say that, you say, is it a stationary point? That's the first thing. Secondly, when t is 1.7, is v 33? We can't read that off of that. Okay, you've got to see if it's, and then thirdly, is it a minimum rather than a maximum? So three things to show. So, let's click through those again. Let's do the first one. Show that it's a stationary point, a stationary value. At stationary points, dv over dt is equal to zero. So, we take this equation here, the dv over dt equation, put it equal zero, find t. So, I go to my calculator. It's a quadratic I'm dealing with. Now, if I've got 0 0.2 times something is 0, that something must be 0. So I've only got to deal with this bit. I, at this stage, I can ignore the 0 0.2. But it's a quadratic. To solve that, mode 5, the third one is the quadratic. A is the number of x squared, so in this case, the number t squared. We've got to be careful with the sign. So A is minus 171, minus 171, equals B is the number of X's, or in this case, number of T's. So B is plus 1830, so it's got plus sign. And then C is minus 2616, minus 2616, equals, press equals. There's my first value of X, it's 9.002, which I'm going to treat as 9. And then the second value, 1.699, that is about 1.7. So my two answers were equal to 9 and 1.7. Those are the two values of t that I get at my turning point. Always check against your sketch. So when we've done it, look at the sketch. Is there a turning point or a stationary point at 9? Yes, that looks right. 1.7, yes, it looks right. Okay, so we've got those as our values. The next thing, when t is equal to the 1.7, that's the one I'm interested in, is the y e or the v equal to 33? Well, there's our v equation. So, back to here, back to mode 1, put in the original equation again, 0.2, open bracket, 2250 minus... 2616x plus 915x squared minus 57x cubed. Move to the right before I bring that. Now I should check it all through again, but I hope I've got it right. Okay, so you'll check it and then I do count 1.7. Count. 1.7, let's hope it comes to 33, good, 33.4, 33, so when we put it in, when t is 1.7, all of this lot, that's putting 1.7 in, did come to the 33, so we've got that working. Now that has told me what we found out so far is that there is a stationary point at 1.733, so we've shown there's a stationary point at there. Okay, now we've now got to show that it is a local minimum rather than local maximum. Okay, I need to come to the next page for this, but this is where we use the T2B over TT squared. Because if it's a local maximum, then at this value, at 1.7, this has got to be, for a maximum it would be negative, for a minimum it would be positive. So let's have a look. We've done those bits there, that's just repeating the question. When t is 1.7, that's the equation from the previous page that we found. D2b over dt squared is. Let's put 1.7 into it. So where I put the t, I'll put 1.7. Back to here. Cancel. Let's put in the equation, which is 0.2. Open brackets. 1830. 
minus 3 or 2, that's the d2d over d2 squared 1 alpha x. Loads of dice, but let's check it. Yes, and now count 1.7, and let's hope to be a minimum. It's going to be a positive value, so let's hope it comes to something positive. Yes, it has. It's come to, let's to be, let's to be, a, oh, I'm pressing one button, so 249.7. It's coming to about 250, so it comes to 250. 250 is more than naught, it's positive, and so as it's positive, you can say that 1733 is a local minimum. Make the statement at the end. So we showed that this was a, a, a first point, stationary point. Now we've shown that it is a local minimum. Okay. The third bit. Explain what this means and specify the time of day. Well, when t is 1.7, we don't talk about 1.7 hours. It's one hour and some minutes. So let's look at 0.7 hours. Well, 0.7 hours, turn it into minutes, multiply by 60, is 42 minutes. Okay, so what we've got is 0.7 hours is equal to 42 minutes, so 1.7 is at 1.42 in the morning, the time 0.142. Okay, so what's it saying? It's saying at 0.142, a local minimum. It says then the traffic flow reaches a minimum of 33 vehicles per hour. So at 1.42, that's at time, it's reaching a minimum, and the minimum is 33 vehicles per hour. Okay, because if we look back at this, that's what's saying, vehicles per hour. Okay, question three. Find the time of day when the model predicts that the number of vehicles is changing at its fastest rate. Okay, in other words, it's where it's steepest. Now, we often do this by looking at d2v over dt squared equals zero. But whenever we're looking at one of these things, always consider, yes, where d2v over dt squared equals zero, which is somewhere around here, okay, but also, consider your, your end points, okay, because those could work as well. So, let's do the first thing. Let's find where d2v over d2 squared is zero. This is where you're looking at where things are steepest. Okay, so here's my d2v over d2 squared equation, which I worked out earlier. I want that to equal zero. So, 0 0.2 times something is zero when this part here is zero. Now, 1830 minus 432t is 0. If that minus that is 0, they are equal to each other. So t must equal 1830 divided by 342. 1830 divided by 342 equals, it is about 5.35. Okay, so t is about 5.35. That's where you'd expect it somewhere around here. Now, that is where the rate of change is, has got its steepest increase. So, if we were being asked, where is it, what time of day predicts the number of vehicles is increasing at its fastest rate, this would be when it happens, here. But it doesn't say increasing, it says changing. So, it could be where it's increasing here, or where it's changing. Now, where it's changing, it, the greatest the steepest parts here are right at the start and right at the end because of course we're not going past 12 on the model. So what we do now is we want the gradients we're looking at, the rate of changes of gradients. Here's my gradient equation and I'm looking at it at three points where t is 0, where t is 5.35 and where t is 12 and I'm saying at wh which of those three points is it going to be steepest? Okay, so it's not finding the values. It's no good finding what the B value is here and here and here. It's finding how steep they are. That's using dv over dt. So, very easy to do. We go to this. We're in mode 1. We put in our dv over dt equation, as usual, and we're substituting in three numbers. 2616 plus 183. 0, alpha x, 
minus 1, 7, 1, alpha x squared, close my brackets, let's check it, 0 0.2, minus 2, 6, 1, 6, plus 1, 8, 0, x, okay, that bit, minus 1, 7, 1, x squared, good, okay, now, this is one of the great advantages of the count button, because if I'm substituting in three numbers, I can do all three of them one after the other. I can show here where I'm calculating, putting them in. I can show t equals naught, I put in naught. t equals 5.35, I replace my t there by 5.35. And then the last one, I write this down and replace the t by 12 in brackets each time. But to work it out, there's the thing. Count zero equals s to d minus 5.2.3.2 minus 5.2.3. The next one, calc 5.35 equals 4.56. There it is. And then the final one, okay, calc 12 equals minus 1.0.5.6. So all I had to do is type this one equation in just once and then do calc 0, calc 5.35, calc 12, get my free answers. Now, the biggest number here is the 4, 5, 6, because obviously positive numbers are bigger than negative numbers. So if I was looking at the very biggest increase, it's that one. That's where the increase is. But I'm being asked where it's changing at the fastest rate. So for that, I can ignore the negative numbers. I can say this one, it may be going down, but it's going down, and that is the gradient, it's minus 5, 2, 3, it's going down steep, more steeply, and this one is going up. And here, that's the steepest decrease of all, that's the really steep one, okay? So what I look for is I look for the biggest number, ignoring the signs. So the minus sign is showing that it's going, the gradient's going down rather than up, how steep it is, the size of a number, so when is it steepest? By the time of day, it is at 12 noon, because the model only applies up till 12 noon, so we can't go past there. Okay, next one. The greatest flow of traffic is between 6.30, somewhere around here, and 11 o'clock, around here. So that's when the greatest flow of traffic is, the highest numbers. Find the average number of vehicles per hour during this period. Now, you've probably already in lessons done it where it's going naught up to 12. Here, I'm doing it for a different part, just so that you do the same process, but we're doing it with some different numbers. So, the first thing we've got to do is say, well, 6.30, what is t equal to at 6.30? It's 11 o'clock, it's easy, t is 11. The 6.30 is halfway between 6 and 7, so at 6.30, t is 6.5. Next bit we're looking at we find the total number of vehicles between those times, and then, once we find the total number, we can find the average. So to total it, you, you're finding the area underneath to find the total number. We do that by integration. So we integrate. Okay, we integrate the value of V. Here's the formula there. You see it's the same formula with respect to T, so it's DT. But we're doing it not from 0 to 12, we're going from 6.5 up to 11. Right, the rule, of course, the 0.2 just stays there. If you wanted to, you could even have moved it in front of the integration sign if you wanted to, because it's a number. But, but we won't worry about that. So you've got 0.2 there. And now, increase the power, OK, and divide by the new power. So. Here, there weren't any t's, so it goes to 2250t. Divide by the new power, the new power is 1, divided by 1 makes no difference. This one goes up to t squared, and if I divide that by 2, I get 1308. If I wanted to, I could have written as minus 2616 over t, if I wanted to. But I can divide by 2 easily, so I will. This one, this is a bit harder goes up to t cubed, I divide by 3. It doesn't go even so, so easy, so I've left it like that. But if I wanted to, there's nothing wrong if I'd have put 915 divided by 3 equals, I could have put 305 there plus 305 t cubed. It's up to me, okay? So I've done one of them where I've actually divided by 2. The other one, I've left that way. It's up to you which you do. 
This one, I definitely leave as 57 over 4 because 4 doesn't go into 57. So increase the power to 4, divide by 4. Right, next stage. Okay, it is actually easier if I've done that as 305 because it saves a little bit of time later on. But having done it this way, I'll stick to it. I now need to put in 11 and I need to put in 6.5 and I take one away from the other. So firstly, I put all of this lot down. Wherever I see a T, I put 11 in brackets. And then I take away, same thing, putting in 6.5. Now, it's really important when I do this that I don't just go to my final answer. I show the two numbers. I show what I get there, and I show what I get here. Okay, so onto this, mode 1. Okay, I need to put in the... Formula, once I've done my integration, I'll move it across a bit so I can see it, that's this one here, and then I sub in my numbers. So it's 0 0.2, open brackets, 2, 2, 5, 0, alpha, x, my t, minus 1, 3, 0, 8, okay, x squared, plus... Okay, 305 T cubed would be quicker, but I didn't, if I didn't spot that, it's onto brackets. 915 over 3, move to the right, alpha x. I could have had that x cubed above, up above the line if I wanted to. I must now move to the right to get it off the index. Okay, and then minus, again, onto fraction 57 over 4. Okay, alpha x to the power of 4. Okay, then I've got to close my brackets, move there, close the brackets. Now let's check it through. 0 0.2, yes. 2250x, yes. Minus 1308x squared, yes. Plus 915 over 3x cubed, yes. Minus 57 over 4x to the 4, yes. Okay, and now count 11 equals 4931 divided by 20, 246.55. Okay, oops, what have I done here? Let's just, okay, let's go there. What on earth's happened? Okay, something's gone wrong. Let's go to my calculator. Sorry, I must have typed in the wrong thing. Calc 11 equals, you see it's still there, so even though I made a mistake, it doesn't matter. Calc 11 equals 12760.55. 12760.55, good. Okay, and now count, okay, 6.5 equals, I don't know why I've got so many things here. Move out the way, come on. 3537.5. Is that it? 3537.096875. Right, so I've got both numbers down. I'm sorry about that, but you see, there's the calc. Let's do them again. Calc 11 equals 12760.55, and calc 6.5 equals 3537.096875. Okay, now if I take those away from each other, then it comes to about this. Okay. Let's see, let's actually do the calculation. 1, 2, 7, 6, oh, my, that, sorry, 0.55 minus, I know I've done a bit of rounding off here, but 3537.096875 equals, as long as I don't round too much, 9223.45, so it's about 9223, okay? Now, that's the total number of vehicles. I want the average, but it's not the average from 0 up to 12. It was the average from 6.30 to 11 o'clock. Well, 6.30 to 11 o'clock is four and a half hours, 4.5 hours. So I need to do my average is this thing here divided by 4.5. Again, I seem to have got too many of those crosses there. So it's this thing here. Divide it by 4.5 equals, and it should come to 
Okay, it's a lot. 2050, about to three significant figures, it's going to be 2050. Come on, put away. 2050, people throughout. So there was the exact answer, or well, near enough. I've already done some rounding. 2049.656, and I round it 2050 per hour. It is important that I do round off to the nearest whole number, but I don't have part of the vehicle there. It just makes it a little bit more sensible. Okay, right. Next one, question five. Graph can be modelled back right now. For these next couple of questions, last two questions, what I've done is instead of drawing it as if it's one model, they could have given you three different models. So we've got V equals one model between naught and four. So we've got this as a cubic applying here. Then we've got a straight line going from four to eight. And then we've got another one, a quadratic, going from 8 to 12 here. So basically they're giving three models, each model applies for a different section. And we're asked for the rate of change between t equals 4 and t equals 8. Now that's the bit where it's a straight line. And notice there's no equation given, so we're going to have to do a bit of working out. Let's actually, if I do this, if I move that out of the way, I can put it back there in a moment, what I want is I'm going to put that on. There's my straight line between 4 and 8. Okay, that's the bit I'm interested in. It says find the rate of change between t equals 4 and t equals 8. It's a straight line, so it's just going to be a number. It's the gradient of that line. Now, to work out the gradient of the line, I need to know what these two points are at the end of the line. Now, this doesn't tell me it, but this and this does. Because... Where point A is, it's not only on the straight line here, it's also on this curve here. So what I need is I need the first curve, because it goes up to 4, I need to put 4 into this, and that will give me the Y coordinate or the V coordinate at A. I know that the X or the T coordinate is 4, I need to know what the other one, the V, is here. So I just go to there. And I need to shove it in there. So, mode one, let's put it in. Minus five, open bracket, 2.5, alpha x cubed, look to the right, minus 34, alpha x squared, plus 100, alpha x, minus 90, close my brackets, Okay, minus 5, 2.5x cubed, minus 34x squared, plus 100x, minus 90. And I want count 4, because I want the end point on it. Count 4 equals something wrong. I couldn't see that, surely. 2.5x cubed, minus 34, plus that. Okay, count Let's try it again. Count four equals one oh eight. I don't know what I've done there. Okay, V equals that. Find the rate of change. Have I let's see if I've got my equation right. Okay, let's see. Then T equals zero. V equals four cube minus that plus that minus nine. Let's check our types of thing now. 2.5x minus 5, 2.54 cubed, minus 45 whole square, plus 100x minus 90. Oh, I put a time sign. See? Now, if you get something silly, check it back. I've done something silly here. I can see it was a silly answer. And I just check it, and it shows how important it is to check it properly. I didn't check that properly, did I? That should be a plus sign. Okay? Now, I should have picked that up when I did my check. And I did what I suspect some of you do, which is just to zoom through and say, yes, it's right. Okay? But fortunately, when I got my answer, count four, I saw it was look silly. Ah, 370. At four, 370. That looks much better. Okay? So we can all make mistakes. Okay, when it's four, it comes to 370. Now, that's that one. B is where 
t is 8 at the end of the straight line, and that's at the start of this one, where t is 8. So now, all I do for the next one is I say when t is 8, v is, and I replace this t by 8. So I go to the other equation. So instead of this one here, okay, let's type in the other one, minus 200. Let's see if this time I can do it correctly. x squared plus 3600x uh, minus 13910. Now this time I'm going to check it properly, because last time I didn't. Minus 200x squared, good. Plus 3600x, good. Minus, okay, what we've got? 13910, good. Calc, and I want calc 8 equals 2090. Okay, does that look sensible at 8? Just around 2290. That looks right. There we are. This shows that I'm putting the 8 in. There's the answer. If I didn't have time to write this bit down, I just go the answer, and then later on in the test, I left a bit of a space and come back and fill it in then, if I have time. Now, that tells me the coordinates of A and B. A is 4, 370. Okay. There we are. 4, 370. And B is 8, 2090. So there's my line A, B. There's one point, there's the other. Now to find the gradient of a line, I want this length divided by that length. Now this length is what 2090 take away 370. The y coordinates, 2090 take away 370. And the other length going across is the 8 take away the 4. So all I need to do is the calculation. So I need to do 2090 take away 370 equals 1720. 8 take away 4 is 4. I can do that bit in my head. And then finally, 1720 divided by that 4 equals 430. So the way to change the gradient of a line is you subtract the y coordinates and then subtract the x coordinates and then divide one by the other. The way to change is 430 vehicles per hour. Next question, almost finished now, last bit. Still the same question as before, still exactly the same. B uh, from naught to four, one equation, straight line, then, and then another. Find the equation of the straight line between it, and then show the average number of vehicles is 1,070 per hour. On this page, I'm going to do that bit. The next page, I'll do this bit. Find the equation of a straight line between 2, 4, t equals 4, and t equals 8. Well, on the previous page, we worked out the gradient was 430. We also worked out two points. Now, I can use either point. Okay, so I've got my gradient is 430, and I can use 4, 370, or I can use 808 and 2090. I'm going to use this one because it's easy. So that's the point I'm going to use, 4, 370. There's my gradient, 430. So gradient 430, it goes through the point 4, 370. Now, you will remember y equals mx plus c. In this case, my y is v, my x is t. So strictly, it's what v equals mt plus c. Let's put the numbers in. Okay, my y coordinate, or my v coordinate, is 370. Equals m, the gradient, 430, multiplied by the t, which is 4, plus c. So, my v coordinate, 370, equals the gradient, multiplied by the t coordinate plus c. Well, 430 times 4, 430 times 4 equals 1720 plus c. So c is 370 take away the 170. Oh, sorry, 370 take away 1720. 370 take away 1720 equals minus 1350. So my equation is V equals, instead of M, 430, T, and instead of plus C, minus 1350. Okay, so it's the same as you've done for Y equals MX plus C. Next bit, average number. They've given us an answer, show that, so that means that we know if we've got the right answer. 
Now, basically what we've got here is we've got to work out the area under that bit. We know its equation is there. The area under this line, we've just worked out its equation. And the area under that bit, we know its equation. They give it to us here. So let's go back to it, show the average number. The first equation, it was between 0 and 4. So I'm looking here to find the total numbers. Put the equation down, integrate it, put in the numbers. OK, let's do it quite fast. Increase the power by 1 and divide by the new power. So 2.5 divided by 4 equals, as a decimal, 0.625. So you see how we did that. The minus 5 stays here. Increase the power by 4 to 4. Divide that by 4 because it's 0.625. This one, minus 34, t cubed. 3 doesn't go into it, so I'll leave it as minus 34 in there. This one, to increase the power to 2, t squared. Divide by 2, 50. And then minus 5 to t. Put in the numbers 4 and 0. OK, now I could probably show how I'm putting it in, but I'm running out of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go across here and just type in, I'll make certain I'm in mode 1, but I know I am, minus 5, open brackets, 0.625 alpha x to the power of 4, take away bracket, oh sorry, fraction. 34, oops, I forgot to move to the right, take away, fraction, 34 over 3, move to the right, alpha x cubed, move to the right, plus 50x squared, minus 90x, okay, Close my brackets, and I want count 4 equals 626.6 for curving. 626.6 for curving. And I want count 0. You're probably going to guess that it is 0, but we'll check to be certain. Count 0 equals 0, yes. If there had been some calc something to do with sines and cosines or E's involved, then we would have to be really careful there. Now, obviously, take away 0, it stays the same. Now, I'm just rounding it off to 627. Okay, I could, could have left it 626.6. Next one. Okay, between 8 and 4. Here's the equation of a line that we worked out um, on the previous page. So, increase the power by 1. Uh, so, t to the power of 1 gives us t squared. Divide by 2, 215. Here, minus 1350t. So, this one's going to be really fast to type in. So it's going to be, let's move it to the side so I can see, 215, OK, and that's x squared, minus 1350x, count 8 equals 2960, pull it back up again, count 4 equals minus 1960 is the minus sign. So it's 2960 minus minus. So we've got to be careful because minus minus makes it a plus. So when I work that one out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to 2960 minus minus makes a plus, plus 1960 equals 4920. Right, last one. Here's the equation and it's going between 8 and 12. So let's type in, oh, do, let's do the integration first. Integrate it. Increase the power by 1, t cubed, divide by 3. Increase the power by 1, t squared, divide by 2, comes to 1800. And in, just put the t in there. Okay, so let's type in that one. Okay, let's do minus, then do a fraction. 200 over 3. Move it to the right, alpha x cubed plus 1800x squared minus 13910x. OK, and I want to do that count 12. I should have checked it, but let's just see. Minus 22920, that's what I got before. 
and count eight equals minus to that. Let's turn it minus three o oh, two one three point three the curving minus three o oh, two one three point three the curving minus three o oh, two one three point three the curving. Now, because that's a minus minus, that's going to make that as a plus. So it will actually end up positive. If it had ended up negative right at the end here, then it would look silly because we couldn't have a negative number of vehicles. Okay, so let's now type that in. It's minus two two nine two. O oh, minus minus makes a plus. I'm do three O oh, two one three. I know there's a point three the curving at the end as well, but it's going to be seven two nine three point three the curve. 729302. So the total number of vehicles, 627, 4920, 7293. We've got 7293 already there. Let's add on the 4920, add on the 627 equals 12840. So the average, well, this was over the average in total, it's over 12 hours. That was 0 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 12, so we've got to divide that by 12. So the final thing, let's hope it's got to come to 1070, divide it by 12, and see if we got it by 1070. Excellent, it has. Okay, so it's all worked out. Okay, so those are my suggestions on the first of the um, ones. If you work your way through that and go through it slowly, make sure that you understand everything on it, that should help prepare you for the exam. Okay, so good luck.